Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So hopefully everyone's in the live classroom. Give me a green check mark in Blackboard if you are ready to go. And we shall get started for today. I'm really looking forward to next week, you guys, and really getting into the novel with you guys as well. Super excited for that. Um, but today there's one more thing that we need to do before we actually delve into the novel and start doing uh, the work around the novel. And that is talking about literary devices. All right. And hopefully, cross my fingers, that this is a fun, quick little um, intro to literary devices for you guys. And hopefully, cross my fingers again, that everything works. All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we need to talk about literary devices. So, here we go. First of all, um, here's our agenda. What are literary devices? Okay. We cannot cover them all in the short space of time that we have. So I have given you a couple of different resources in the assignment and also in the course, and I'll point those out to you guys as the lesson goes on today, okay? Then I'm going to show you, we're gonna do a little fun activity around modeling how to find literary devices, and then you guys are going to go out and find your own literary devices, examples, all right? So in the uh, assignment, you guys, uh, the literary devices, you will see the first video. And this is a really great video. Um, I just got to bring up my assignment here, you guys. So there's your introduction to literary devices. All right. I'm actually going to open this up in a new tab. And it's the very first assignment or very first video. So if you guys could take a look at that, and then we'll come back into Blackboard and I'll have some questions for you to answer. All right. So I'm just going to quickly let you know, I think it's about, look at that. It's about four and a half minutes long. So if we put five minutes up on the timer, then come back into Blackboard and I'll give you your questions to ponder. All right. Go ahead, guys.
Perfect. I'm glad some of you enjoyed the video. I know it's quite funny to hear some rapping by a teacher. All right, and hopefully it won't ever come to that that you guys will have to hear me rap. All right. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, in the room chat, okay, you'll notice that I've got some questions up on my PowerPoint here. So in the room chat, what was one device that you have never heard before? Was there one? And if there, if you've heard of all of them, okay, that's great. Which one would have been the, would be the biggest challenge to actually implement into your own writing? Oh, Alex, I should not rap. No, no, that's off limits. Maybe sing, but no rapping. <laughs> Good, so there's a dialect. Great, Abby, I'm actually gonna show you another, which actually prompts me, thank you. I will remember, maybe it's the same website we even found together, Abby. I'll, uh, I'll show you. I've also got a website of literary devices as well. Um, illusion, yes, Alex, that's, all, that's actually one that uh, has come up a lot. Um, alliteration, Avery, good. Hyperbole, Abby. It was, Ava, good. <laughs> oh, Alex, how you flatter. <laughs> all right, good, excellent, you guys. So, um, on the wrapping note... <laughs> I want to show you, since Abby just reminded me as well for that website, remember under our English 10 tab, I've given you a whole bunch of different resources, right? It's our grammar site. It's our where our provincial exams are. I've also included a literary device resource. So let's see. No, I think this is a different one than yours, Abby, but this one I really like. So you guys can, you, there's tons of resources out there for literary devices. I just found this one to be the most concise and really, really easy to, to navigate through. It's all alphabetical. It's got some great definitions. It even gives you some samples through the links. Okay. So this one is really, really good to help as well with uh, your for a resource if you're ever looking for a specific literary device. All right, you guys. So let's head back to my PowerPoint here. And good. So there were some devices that were, um, that were new to you guys, which is great because now, oh, look at that. I'm already ahead of myself. So there you go. So your literary devices link is in the course. I also put in another video in the assignment that will, that's a little bit more um, advanced. It's about a 10 minute video. Um, and what it does is it uses songs, which is foreshadowing a literary device to what we were going to be doing today. Mr. Fender actually found this video for me and it's a great example. I'm not gonna show it to you guys, but if you have time once we get into work time, feel free to use that video as a resource as well because it actually gives really specific examples to different literary devices. And some of them are the same from the first video and some of them are different. So that's really, really nice as well. So that's another resource once we get into um, our work as well. I laughed. If some of you... Oh, good, Jade. So you did watch this one as well. I kind of laughed because when I was watching it yesterday, there's one song that they use that's like Swedish. And I'm like, great. Glad this is an example of a literary device. Don't understand a word of the song. So anyways, you guys, if you watch the video, you'll get to that point. It's quite funny. All right. So this is what we're going to do to introduce you guys to your assignment. I have in the assignment five songs. Okay. And I just have little snippets of the song. It's not the whole complete song. 
So what I want to do is listen to one song at a time. Okay. And then we're going to um, figure out what examples of literary devices are within those songs. All right. So in the back of your mind, when you're listening to the song, can you identify the specific literary device or devices in each song? So if I head to the course and the assignment, you guys will see, and unfortunately I can't play the songs for you. Okay. You guys, you're going to have to listen to them on your own. All right. So the first thing that you can do is you'll see the five songs right here. Okay. So we're going to start with Rockstar by Nickelback. You may not like these songs. Some of them I don't like, but they do show great examples. All right. Of what literary, what some literary devices are. What I'd also like you to do is actually download the literary device. Um, I've actually printed out the lyrics as well. All right. Because then you can have, you can hear it and you can also see it at the same time. Okay. So let's start with Rockstar. Each of them are not very long. You guys, I like they're less than a minute of a snippet of a song. So let's start with Rockstar. Okay. As soon as you finish listening to Rockstar and make sure a reminder, download the lyrics as well, because that will help you guys find the literary devices. Listen to Rockstar, give me a green check mark, and then we'll figure out where the literary devices are. Okay. So go ahead and do that. All right. Good. Yes, you guys. So remember to give me those green check marks once you just listen to Rockstar. Actually take a look at the lyrics. Okay. And what do you think? Type it into the room chat. Do you see any literary devices in there? Feel free to go back to um, the, the, the resources that I gave you. The website, the video, whatever you can remember from the video. Okay. Now, okay, I'm going to bring this up on, on our screen here, you guys, so that we can see what the chat is doing here. All right. So, so far I've got metaphor. I've got hyperbole, um, a simile. <laughs> and that's totally fine, Jade. Okay. Yeah, you guys. Okay. So first, first of all, the biggest one that I think that Nickelback for this song for Rockstar is hyperbole. So when you actually look at the download, right there, and if you actually listen to the whole song as well, you can actually, um, there is a lot of hyperbole in there, 
right? So hyperbole is that ex- over exaggeration to get your point across, right? So when he's singing, he says, and a bathroom I can play baseball in. It's a little bit of a hyperbole because that really can't happen, right? So that's, um, that's the big example that I wanted to show you what a hyperbole was with Rockstar. You betcha. There's some other literary devices in there. Okay. Um, you guys may have found a simile for sure. Uh, where was it that you guys saw that one? Okay. Remember? <laughs> Okay. Remember too that you guys, just because they use the word like or as doesn't necessarily mean that that line meet it's a simile. It's got to be a comparison. Okay. So something is like something else. Okay. So just beware. All right. That it's got to be that comparison. Um, definitely it's also, um, it's almost a modern day illusion as well, you guys, because he is alluding to the lifestyle of a rock star, right? And this is how we envision what rock stars' lives are all about, that over-the-top extravagant lifestyle with lots of money and we can buy and have whatever we want. So he's alluding to that lifestyle. So that's another uh, literary device that's used in this one. All right. Let's go to the next one, you guys. Uh, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Green day. All right. So take a listen to that one, you guys. And again, give me that green check mark and let me know what you think. Okay, so Alex, I was just going to make the comment. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking he walks alone, definitely. And I like how you used uh, hyperbole to make your point. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Good, Ava. Awesome. Excellent. And Taylor, definitely there's a mood in his song, right? A lot of Green Day songs are very, um, almost dark because his voice is very unique, right? Absolutely. There's definitely some personification in this song. So remember that personification is giving an inanimate object, a human quality, 
right? Yeah, absolutely. I believe this one too talks about um, his shadow walking. That was another example. The city sleeps. Ava picked up on that one. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. So you guys got and repetition. Obviously, that was the other one that was big in in this song. Absolutely, and I think repetition is one of the easier ways. But to tie that in, I think the repetition also ties into what Taylor mentioned: the mood. Right. If you keep saying you're walking alone, you feel that dark, depressed state that he almost feels it. That he feels he's he's in. Okay, he's very lonely in this song. All right, good, you guys. So next one is "Girl on Fire," my f- daughter's favorite song. So take a take a listen to Alicia Keys. Give me that green check mark. <laughs> Sorry, Jade. <laughs> I love your guys's conversations. Yes, definitely, you guys are are uh, are getting this one. Absolutely, Taylor. It's definitely figurative speech, right? That's why I love this song because, my like I said, Jade. I know. Close your ears. <laughs> um, my daughter, my older daughter. This is one of her favorite songs, and when it first came out, she was like, "Mommy." Why? Why is the girl on fire? Why would anyone want to be on fire? Right? She was literally taking it literally. And that's that figurative speech. So definitely, Taylor, some figurative speech. Definitely some repetition. Good, Bria. Okay. Yep. There are some comparisons in there. Yep. And there's definitely some symbolism in there. Yep. Good, you guys. Excellent. Okay, so <laughs> good. Absolutely. Yeah, Shana. It's like you're being on. Yeah, it's like when you're playing. I know in sports, it's a big metaphor as well, right? Like you're on fire. We'd always say that when we were playing playing basketball, right? And you, you know, if I was hitting all my threes, my teammates, oh, word, you're on fire, right? It's just that saying. So good. Excellent. Okay, next one. Firework by Katy Perry. Another one of my daughter's favorites.
Perfect. I just see you guys chatting here, so I'll just wait to give you a second. Good. Yeah, firework is the easiest example to show a metaphor, right? And it's all comparing her not only to the plastic bag, but there's also a couple of different metaphors. But the big one is also the firework, right? Comparing her to a firework. So that's, and remember, metaphor is using it, using it, that comparison without using like or as. So similes within each of the stanzas, but the overall metaphor of, 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 of comparing her to a firework that's the big metaphor. Yes, Abby, rhyme as well. Rhyme's pretty easy to find within most songs, right? So that's really important. Perfect. Awesome. Absolutely, Ava. Jade, is that you literally? Are you using some figurative language there? Yeah, Shane, I totally agree with you. I think Katy Perry in general, her songs, whether they're her catchy, upbeat songs or her um, slower songs, are very, very personal. <laughs> oh, Jade. <laughs> All right. So good, you guys. Oh, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> So let's go to the last one. Again, another one of my favorites from my daughters, Taylor Swift. So feel free, you guys, go and uh, um, listen to that one and then let me know. Give me a green check mark again and then let me know what the, what the literary devices are. Very good, Jade. Good. That is why I chose this song. Absolutely. So there is an allusion to Romeo and Juliet. And especially if you watch the video, it's all about the balcony scene, right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's lots of other literary devices. That's the big point of songs, lyrics, poems. You will find literary devices, though, in most text, most fictional text. So just be aware of that. So when we even start reading The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, you're going to see that there are a lot of literary devices used, okay? Yeah, absolutely good, you guys. And yes, Alex, I can't tell if that is sarcastic or not. That's where, that's where Taylor Swift started her career was in country. And then she's moved into more pop area. Perfect. You guys. All right. So now I think you guys are pretty clear on what literary devices are. And if you don't, 
So um, if you don't remember where your resources are, right? You've got your website that you can uh, go check out. You've got your couple of videos that will, will help you out as well. Now it's your turn, okay? So what is your favorite song? I know most of you probably have um, multiple favorite songs. So it's totally up to you. You need to choose a favorite song, okay? In the assignment, I have given you a website, songlyrics.com. If you go there and click on the link, you can easily search. All you have to do is type in the title to the song or the uh, singer, the artist, and it will search it for you, okay? What I would like you to do is then copy and paste uh, the lyrics into either a Word document or the online text. I, if you have Word, you guys, use Word. It'll be way easier, okay, than just using the online text. I highly recommend that. You need to find at least five different literary devices within your song. They have to be different. So you can't show me five times where the singer rhymes, okay? That's only one literary device. Okay, so make sure that that's working, okay? Now, if you can't find five different literary devices in your one song, then you might need to choose another song as well. So if you can only find three in one song, go and find the lyrics to another song and find two more, okay? That's totally fine. But you need to highlight or set apart your examples with clear labels of what that literary device is. Is it a hyperbole? Is it repetition? Is it, um, you know, alliteration? Whatever it is, you need to have it stand out. So whether you're highlighting and labeling, whether you're separating it from the stanza, whatever that is, okay? So that is your task for today, all right? You need to find your own literary devices within your favorite song, okay? No, Taylor, you have to be able to explain. So great question. Does anybody else have need some clarification? I'm just going to bring that question up because that's a really good... Yeah, you can't just list five literary devices. You need to show me specifically where in the song it is and what it is demonstrating, okay? That's really, really important because the provincial exam is going to ask you a literary device multiple choice question because that's usually at least one question on the exam, okay? Any other questions or are we clear? If you're clear, give me a green check mark in Blackboard. Good, good. I'm seeing the sea of green check marks now. If you have a question, keep ty typing. No, Avery, exactly. You don't have to explain to me what the song is about. I, I can probably figure that out myself. That isn't the point of this, okay? The point is, is can you figure out a literary device in the song? So you don't need to explain, you just need to highlight and say, this is a simile. And I'll be like, yes, it is, or no, it's not, okay? So you don't need to say, this is a simile because it uses like or as, because I already know what a simile is, all right? Okay, no, Shana, another great question, okay? It can be any song. It does not have to be a new song. It can be any song that you choose, but here's my stipulation. It needs to be school appropriate, Okay, please don't send me inappropriate songs that have foul language or discriminatory content, okay? So make sure, okay, yeah, good. Jade, you know what? If you can find some literary devices in nursery rhymes, 
Absolutely. Do it up. Okay? No, Alex. Great question. You cannot use the songs that I have already introduced. Okay? You must choose a different song than the five songs. So sorry if one of those were your ultimate favorite songs. Okay? <laughs> Thanks, Jade. All right. And I'm sure someone actually will take me up on that, Jade. It may not be you, but I'm pretty sure somebody will go back into the nursery rhymes and then send me them with all the literary devices pointed out. Okay, so that is uh, it for live classroom today, ladies and gentlemen. If you're good, uh, please actually do stay in Blackboard for the next little bit. Okay, I do have a little wrap up once we're once I'm ready to leave you guys. But this is it for the live classroom. Give me a couple minutes. I'll be back into Blackboard once I get to my office. And uh, in about 15, 20 minutes, we'll uh, do our wrap-up reflection. All right? Thanks, guys.